All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Burning R&D. This is our first episode of Burning R&D. Uh, I have some faces messed up. Uh, we have a new person with us this time. It's uh, Les Bosmer. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. And they're pretty cool. And they're going to be joining us for Torchbearer. Um, so yeah, um, what have you guys been up to? Anything really amazing? I've been filling my head with all things Torchbearer in order to run this uh, this game. <laughs> That's been my week. Yes. You, those of you may be wondering why you don't see a picture of me there, or a webcam. I'm currently house-sitting, and the internet is really bad. And my computer broke, so I'm using a bad laptop. So I think that my entire tech like capabilities have been cut into probably a 16th with both of those combined. So yes, that is for this session, and this session only. Both of those problems should be fixed next week. Hopefully. One of them will be, because I returned today, and the other one should be. Yeah. Yep. So I'm trying to find one of my screenshots of Primark so you guys can see. It's Did you not take place. one? We, we set that up before. I thought you took Oh, them. I, took, I took them. But I haven't chosen okay. which one I want to use yet. Oh, okay. Sure. I, I would recommend the one in the, in the banana hammock with... Where he's like holding a pool noodle. It's, this one where I'm wearing a funny hat, right? I, I threw one before one. the hot dog suit. That took. It was such a short period of time. I don't think I pressed print screen fast enough. Yeah, I'm a fast changer. Um, so we'll use this one. While you choose, we are starting a new game today, and. Uh, that game is Torchbearer, GM'd by our very own Zentropy. I think the best thing to do to start with would be go around the table and see how much experience each of us have had with Torchbearer. So, Zen, as our resident GM, what is your experience with this game? Um, pretty limited, uh, honestly. Um, I watched a bunch. Uh, I run one. What was it two sessions we did Primark just to just to test out the rules? It was, and, and yeah, everything. a two shot. Yeah, and other than that, I have been trawling forums, reading books, all kinds of stuff. Um, I, I think I could probably pretty pretty easily Mister Ripley myself into Tor Olive's Roots life at this point. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's but, not bad. My experience is I played uh, a game of it at Gen Con a few years back with uh, Sean Nittner. And I think I played nice. it one other time since then. I had a really great time. And I hope that I'll have a great time again. Perfect. I've not played it or run it. I've watched a few sessions of it. Um, but other than that, I have I remember finding the PDF and getting the PDF a while ago, and I think I'm sort of aware of the rules, but, you know, we'll wait till you know, rubber meets the road. That's, that's just what every GM wants to hear. I, I, I'm aware of the rules. I know there are rules. <laughs> there are rules. They exist. Whether we or not we choose to follow them, that is up to us. It, it's yeah, a, same... it's a, the wise is being learned right now. Type thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, same here. I just read the PDF. Mostly. I have, uh, in addition to the two shots that Zen mentioned, um, I ran a single one shot with some people from Mass Squad. Um, it went okay, considering that I went in, into it uh, not having fully read the rules, and also assuming, unfortunately and wrongfully, that it was uh, very much like Burning Wheel. It is not. Yeah, there's there's a lot of concepts that bear the same names, but uh, mechanically very, very different. So Correct. 
we're those of us coming off of the burning wheel game may have to like disengage the the yeah. the, the wheel a bit and uh, we have some unlearning to do <laughs> it won't be too bad though the main thing that is bad. uh the grind yep. yeah i think so and and you know, and you guys suffering and remembering to bottle your tears and send them to me so I may sustain myself on them. <laughs> we'll, we'll, do you take online tier donations? Um, no, I, I prefer like I, I should have said this beforehand. Uh, go get a cup or something, and just like eventually okay. get a vial and a stopper and just send them to me every week. You don't, you because don't have a Patreon that that pro that like prolongs my life force. I am. There. As a GM, I, I this is full of my pre <laughs> This is my tears count at this point. Good. I, I'm this... almost surprised that no one has like rephrased the term bits for Twitch and to like tears for the GM. Just like send all the, <laughs> all the bits and all the tears. Well, the I, yeah. Well, there's the well, whole one drop I, at a time. Yeah. Getting into like that whole thing, there's a whole idea of like rebranding the term bits, but also they want the term bits to be a universal thing. But it's also the idea of each channel being able to customize that name would be cool. Yeah. It would make sense logistically. But it would be cool. Yeah. So for me instead of tears it would be pain, suffering, anxiety, <laughs> loss, angst. The time yeah. I want I want I feed on that. Give it. Yeah. <laughs> and so we will come together to create some of the, all of those motions today. Yes. Will not be happy until someone rage quits uh, and, and cries and runs away. Um, yep. on, on, into the t okay. Well, I was gonna say on that note, um, do we want to jump into character creation? Anybody else got any any pertinent things that they would like to announce to the internet? I don't. Um, I might eventually play Shadowrun on AP Gaming's channel. We were supposed to do it this computer. week, but it got. Interrupted by TwitchCon. Um, yeah, that'll that'll happen. So we're going to play... Edition, uh, yeah, 5th edition. So we're going to play um, Flyers of the Icelander next week. And a week after that, we should play Shadowrun. Nice. So. Oh, not the newfangled Shadowrun uh, abridged or... Oh, no. Anarchy. I mean, I'm not even going to no, look at anarchy. that. Anarchy? It looks, it looks like garbage. I mean, yeah... It looks less than the Cortex system, and I'm not a huge fan of Cortex, so. <laughs> it's like they ported it to a equally complex system that some people just like better. So I'm not at all excited about it. Cool. Yeah. I have my character name, so I'm putting that in now. Okay, thanks. Thanks for skipping all the steps, but whatever. <laughs> uh, I'm an elf ranger. Most of my stuff is predetermined. Right. All right. So um, plus, I may have gone through my entire character creation in my head. I'm probably going to make different choices now because I've forgotten what it is. Well, that's a thing. Mm -hmm. So if you guys look at uh, roll twenty in the journal. There's a folder mm -hmm. called "So You Want to Be an Adventurer" uh, with a character creation and starting gear handout. Yes, uh, that will that will get us through this process. Hopefully, yep. quickly, we'll find out. Correct. All right. So, yeah, everybody has chosen a stock and class. Correct. Yep. Correct. Uh, should we go through them all now, and as we so that people in the context yeah. for character creation. Yeah, yeah. So, Primark, you mentioned you are an elf. I am an elf ranger. Yes. What are the rest of you who will be joining us? I think I'm going to uh, play Maud. I will be a human cleric. I'll be Maud, the dwarven adventurer. No relationship to the other Maud. You're muted. <laughs> oh, no. Hmm? Well, oh, Twitch oh, heard yeah. me. Twitch heard me, so you Twitch guys, you, you guys would just have to <laughs> wait and see. Okay. Group surprise. The audience is filled in, but uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm a human warrior. I'm the strong one. 
All right. Uh, so first thing, we'll start with uh, the two humans of the group. Um, in your skills, uh, you, you've all got like the, the stock stuff that, that comes out of the book. But in your skills, you get to choose one of the following and give it a rating of three. Um, criminal, haggler, pathfinder, or survivalist. Add any of those. And if you... I think if you already have one, you can bump it up. Actually, no. It has to be a different skill. I'm going with survivalist. Okay. I was leaning towards survivalist as well, but since I don't want to double up, I'll do Pathfinder. Pathfinder. Um, next, also for the humans, you have eight points to divide between health and will. Uh, a score, a starting score can be no lower than two and no higher than six. Uh, for our special classes, those have already been pre-assigned. Correct. To, yep. For you of the older races. Four and four. Four and four. Yep. Going five and three. Five and three. Five being held. Nice. All right. And next is for everyone. You have to choose where you're from. Um, if you look at the handout, there are a, a list of places you can be from, as well as skills and traits from those places. When you pick a place, uh, you also pick a skill and give it a rating of two or bump it up by one if you already have it. Uh, additionally, you can choose a trait from your home. I was probably going to go with, I'm from the crossroads. Okay. I kind of want to be a haggler. Sweet. Okay. Um, I think that uh, I will be from the Elflands. And I think I'm going to pick Mentor. Mentor, okay. Is that yeah, for your trait? I have. Are you um, calm or quiet? I think that I will be... Oh, both of those are really good. But I think that I will be calm more than quiet. Okay. And for our dwarf, what was the uh, Crossroads trait you I have to open the PDF, I believe. Oh, it's it's foolhardy or quick-witted. I'm going to be foolhardy. Okay. Uh, I'm going with the religious bastion of Stemminster. And I think Ooh. I'll go uh, cartographer defender. This nice. cat is very frustrating. I keep... <laughs> oh, wait... Literally, I, it's every minute or so. They're jumping back up after I take them down. They want to sit on my keyboard. And as far as our stout meat wall of warrior, uh... Uh, I think I'm going to go with the bustling metropolis, Loresi. Loresi? I'm going. Loresi. And, yeah, and I'm going to go with Hagler and Jaded. So uh, once you guys wanna, all have the... Did you want to double up on skills, or should we take different skills? Uh, did someone else take uh, Hagler? Yeah, I was going to take Hagler. Oh yeah, I can take uh, no, Sailor then. Sailor's okay. good. Sounds cool. I don't know if we're going to be doing Are we going sailing. to be on a boat? Yeah, prob probably not much sailing involved. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there no. could be. I mean, I, given not. the skills... That, Given the skills that you have, I will try to work them in, um, but... Yeah, but, like, that's nothing major, right? Like, it's not like it's my main focus anyway, right? It's just good yeah. to have in my pocket. Right. Yeah, so yeah and, sail to... and Sailor doesn't necessarily have to mean I'm on a boat. It could it could encompass any type yeah, of like thing that you would knot. encounter. Yeah, I can tie me not. 
and you could probably help with Pathfinder in some way with Sailor, you know, by navigating yeah. stars, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if, if we're all good with that and everything's in, next comes Social Graces. Uh, basically, how do you convince people? Everyone choose one skill. Haggler, Manipulator, Orator, or Persuader. If you don't have the skill, give it, a, give it a rating of two. If you do have the skill, bump it up by one to a maximum of four. I'm going to bump my oratory up to four. Very nice. Uh, I think I'll go persuader too. I think that I'm going to go... Uh, no, my character would not be a manipulator, so I'm going to go Persuader as well. Okay. I'm going Manipulator. There you go. All right. Next one you guys are going to have to talk about a little bit. Specialties. Um, basically, choose a specialty from the list and give it a rating of two. If you have it already, bump it up by one to a max of four. No two players can have the same specialty. Yep. Uh, the list is Cartographer, Cook, Criminal, Dungeoneer, Haggler, Healer, Hunter, Manipulator, Pathfinder, Persuader, Orator, Scavenger, Scout, and Survivalist. I would like to state off the bat that we should have someone with Cartography. Cartographer is extremely powerful. It allows us to instantly go some if we've it'll instantly go somewhere we've already been with a single roll with uh, and if it's successful we just go there without having and we just skip past all of the yeah. Obstacles yeah. in between. I, I have it at two currently. Okay. okay. Do you already have it? Um, hmm. <clears throat> Cook is powerful. What's Dungeoneer again? Dungeoneer will allow you to navigate underground. It will allow you to disarm traps. Um, criminal okay. will also help with that. Yeah. Um, basically, you know dungeons, and dungeony stuff can be done with Dungeoneering. Okay. The Do, aside from cartographer, I think the other big one would be scout. Someone I was about should to mention have scout. That. It would make fictional sense for me to become a ranger. Um, also, mm -hmm. hunt is one thing makes fictional sense, but it's not as big of a deal. It's not as important as scout. Uh, actually, as a ranger, I start with a scout of two, so I could bump it up to three if we want. Well, I guess a big question I have then for our GM is are a lot of these dungeons like actual dungeons or is some of these dungeons going to be like natural dense forest or something? Um, well, you will. You are going to have to travel between the dungeon and wherever you decide you're going to go back to, to recover and stuff like that. That will be mostly the only time you're in natural environments. Okay. Um, yeah. Because right. to me, that's sort of like where Hunter might be more Hunt better than Dungeoneering, right? Well, Hunt Hunter like is also useful uh, if you encounter non-sentient creatures in the dungeon. Uh, stuff like yeah, wolves, for any animals. rats, stuff it like is. that. Okay, so it has a little bit of the animal handling in it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's like a Zelda game, right? Where like there's a mini dungeon in the overworld, and you go in the real dungeon. Okay. Well, I will also point ideas. out that scavenger is probably something decent if you want to, yeah. since you have a Get dwarf that can, that has crafting as a as a uh, nature. Uh, scavenging up materials for the dwarf to turn into things while you're in the dungeon probably a good idea. Mm -hmm. Do I need um, to have a skill mm -hmm. that makes me better? At crafting, you uh, want to have a at, skill. At, cra at it, crafting, so you don't necessarily. If you don't have the skill, you can use your nature to craft. Oh. If you do have the skill, you, yeah. you have to use the skill. Right. I think scavenging so though might to... help to like find the materials to start mending or something like that. A yep. mend might be yeah. its own thing. Yeah, there's one a thing healer also, skill. Oh, yeah, I was just about to say. I was like, oh, I also realized there's a healer skill that's probably. Useful. Um, I have healer at two already as well, but I can't be both the yeah. cartographer and the healer. Um, 
what I think I'm going to do is actually spread out my skills as much as possible to start with, because I don't want beginner's luck to be much of a thing. Um, we could start off with that, and then cause it's and initially it will only take uh, two. It's uh, if you have a skill of two, it will take two successful tests and one fail, uh, fail test to advance it already, which will not be too difficult. Well, I'll say that I'll just go all in on Hagler. So when we get to town, we can just go wherever we need. Yeah. True. Can anyone is that, can anyone cook? If not, I'll take cook. Because that's very powerful. I do not I have take that. Cook. Yeah, cook, I'm, cook I'm will allow between... you to turn... Sorry, cook will allow you to turn one ration into a meal for all four of you. Yeah. yeah. So do the whole bread and fish miracle, basically. I'm I'm leaning I'll between healer or cartographer. Uh, what has everyone taken so far? I've taken. Looks like Cook and uh, Hagler, or have been taken. All right, I can take Dungeoneer. Okay. Uh, cool. do you guys want a better cartography thing or a better chance of healing thing? Uh, you already have. It's part of both, right? Yeah, yeah they're both at two, both. so one of them is just being bumped up by one. I mean, what's the um, consequence uh, for failing a cartography test? Um, loss of the how cartography is going to work. Let's let's go over this real quick. As you go into each room, you write down a you know a little description of what the room is that logs it. Um, yeah. You'll eventually make a cartography test, and that will cement those locations onto a map. Uh, and then at any point, you can say, we're going to go back to this spot, and as long as, you are, as long as you are within places you have previously mapped, you can go back to that spot without an issue. Uh, if you fail, you lose that log. You have to go back to the rooms, which, you know, we're probably yeah. just going to gloss over, really, but I, I'm not going to discount the time that it takes to go back and map all those rooms. Mm. If you fail, it means that you didn't draw the rooms correctly the first time in. You have to re, re, re map them. Yeah. Um, and so as always, there will be either a twist or if it doesn't happen, or a condition if you if I give it to you anyway. Um, yeah. It sounds like it's something that if we use, we want to be good at it. Uh, well, it's um, something we'll use. <laughs> something um, we're going to use. Anyway, yeah. right. Now, the, the most powerful thing, in my opinion, Cartographer does, say you're halfway through the dungeon, and you say, all right, we need to GTFO. Leave the dungeon. When right. you come back, you leave the dungeon using Cartographer so you don't have to slog back through. But when you come back, when you're standing in that first room of the dungeon, you can say, all right, let's just skip to where we were before, and any repopulation I've done, you don't have to deal with. Right. The big thing to me, and correct me if I'm misinterpreting this, Zen, because this would be a big issue, is that by jumping, you also um, s skip around the grind of going through all those other rooms, even if they're empty. Uh, well, the grind would only trigger if you rolled. Uh, but oh, okay. yes, it will bypass any rolls you need to make to get someplace else. Uh, right. Yeah. If there were like environmental obstacles, I couldn't that would stay there right. no matter what. Or if we're about to do some big room, but we remembered like four rooms back, there was this nice thing that might be easier to camp in. We could say, we just go back to that room to camp. Right. You can um, also secure one room and say, all right, all this stuff that we really can't carry, we're just going to skip back to that one room we secured, drop it in there, and then come back. Yeah. Exactly. So it is effectively fast travel, mechanically at least. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's Skyrim fast. fast travel, totally. It's, it's fast travel in dungeons. I don't think you can fast travel outside of the correct. dungeon with Cartographer. That's, cor that's correct. Okay. To me, it sounds insanely important, and we'd be using it no matter what, but I don't know mm -hmm. if we want right, that just, more than a better chance of healing. <laughs> just to put that in I'm perspective with healing, um, a healer 
they keep their adventurers whole and healthy. Uh, they can use supplies from alchemists, peasants, and scavengers in the form of herbs and medicine. Healers also create poultices and potions to aid in recovery. Uh, poultices I will believe the obstacles for those not, can be quite high, if I remember. They can, but pult if you have a poultice, it will grant you a bonus die in when you recover. So, almost equally as powerful when you're loaded up with conditions. If you manage yeah. yourself, if you manage yourselves well and never get loaded up, healer less likely to be useful. I the other thing is, I don't um, do too. we can get if when we do circles in the future. We can have a friend who has healer, I mean, go to our friend to get yep. healing. If, yes. Um, but I thought a circles is oral. only town. That's only yeah, town circle, phase. Yeah, circles is only town phase. So yeah. we have to get yeah, to the so. town. We to can cartography that. our way to the yeah. town. Well, you can no, cartography you your way out of the no. dungeon and then pathfinder your way to town. Yeah. Oh, you can't yeah. cartography outside of a dungeon? Right. Uh, I no, just I'm, that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm saying that's a little bit too far reaching for that. Um, My Pathfinder is at three, though. So I'm already kind of that guy. So I re I'm really leaning towards Cartographer. Oh, that was the whole point of Cartographer. So I'm saying Cartographer. No. Cartographers were in dungeons. Yeah, Pathfinder's are outside. Okay, it's done. All right. Okay. So you've got Cartographer. Um, so we have. Cartographer, Dungeoneer, Hagler, and what did the other choose? I'm sorry. Cook? Okay. Cook. All right. Um, mark those somewhere on your sheet that, that it's your specialty. Um, since there's yeah. no dice roller, you can even just put an asterisk next to the uh, uh, oh, exponent true. number. And it won't screw anything up. Um, yeah. And that's just so you know, I have I, I have not found anything in the you. book that says, so, hey, there's a specialty, this is what you get for a specialty. There's really no point to that. Um, I believe one of your circles it is. If it is. uses that. And also, yeah, if, you have a mentor. if we lose characters oh, okay, and your mentor, yeah. are made, we don't want, we don't want uh, a new character that's replacing an old one to have the same specialty as a current character. Right. Um, <laughs> All right, so this one won't accept non-numbers. It won't accept my asterisk. So just put it in your bio and info. Okay, right. I I just put it in parentheses in the mentor thing then because mm -hmm. they're gonna have to know it anyway. All right, so everybody good on specialty? Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. Next we go to Wises. Um, uh, Sir Elf or Lady Elf, whatever kind of elf you are. Sir Elf. Uh, you get Elven lore wise or Elven craft wise, and one I other of your choice. Elven, uh, I'll choose Elven lore wise. I will think on my other one after. That's okay, yeah. Wait, wait to do the one after because I kind of want to go over wises a little bit once when we get to humans. Um, I'm guessing Madam Dwarf uh, is Dwarven Chronicles wise or Shrewd Appraisals wise, and one other of your choice. I think I want to get both of those. You want to get both of those? So you're yeah. going to take... Dwarven Chronicler, I don't take Shooter Praiser. All right. No no rule against that. So you're good. Uh, humans, you can choose any wise you want, but you only get one. Now, just a tip on wises. They're used to help without getting involved in the role, so you can kind of distance yourself from the, the badness uh, if it goes poorly. Uh, one other thing is, if you take a specific kind of monster-wise, it allows you to speak that monster's language, if they are capable yeah. of speaking language. So if you take goblin-wise, for instance, you will be able to speak with goblins and anything else that speaks goblin. I am definitely leaning towards some sort of monster-specific thing, um, but I'm a little uncertain as to the sort of biome, so to speak. Uh, um, the one I mentioned would be useful. Um, goblins, yeah. That, that's that's, right, that's about as far. As, yeah, that's about as far. Orc. Um. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll say this: the one I mentioned will be useful, and if you put in a different monster-wise, odds are I'm not going to make that choice not count for you. So if okay. you start putting in dragon-wise, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> 
old, old god wise. Very, very wise. small friendly yeah. dragon wise. <laughs> uh, old bear wise. There we go. <laughs> yeah. No, that was a joke. Lich, lich wise. Okay, <laughs> lich wise. I mean, but we already know there won't you... be undead unless we make there be undead. So. Oh, they don't. Oh, no, no, that that I didn't I didn't say the reverse is not true. Like, <laughs> just because no, no, you no. don't have it doesn't mean it's not there. You said that when we were but... talking about getting playing paladins. Uh, so no, I said of... demons weren't a thing. Oh, undead demons. demons. That's, okay. that's different. Mm. No, don't you take mm. demon wise. We don't need to deal with that. <laughs> again. No monster wise. I know a lot about how there are no monsters in this world. Yes! No, uh, I think... Peaceful <laughs> tranquility wise. <laughs> so, um, what was I going to say? Shit. Now I've lost it. You guys keep fucking around. Oh, that's um, right. I'm leaning towards a uh, goblin or a kobold. Okay. Uh, oh, that was what it was. As far as non-monster-wise skills, don't make it too broad. Uh, like, man-wise is bullshit. Um, yeah. Bullshit-wise is bullshit. GM horseshit-wise, I might let go. <laughs> 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 but good luck getting that into a roll. <laughs> Yep. And also remember, as I just said, if you put it in there, it's going to happen. So if you want to stick away from GM horseshit. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. But something like day wise, yeah, that's that's not going to cut it. You want to be you want to find that good middle ground between specific enough to to work in. Yeah. A lot of situations, but not so unspecific as to be. Okay. Will you let us have the mouse guard weather wise? Weather wise? Yeah. Um, sure. I, that seems fine to me. Yeah, weather, weather wise would be fine. Um, it's a bit limited inside of a dungeon, right. though. That's the only thing I would caution against. Yeah. It yeah. looks like some of the specific things, ideas, were like book-wise, ice storm-wise, trap-wise, ugly, truth-wise, or war-wise. Yeah. Stuff like that. Like a very yeah. specific thing, not like, you know, adjective-wise <laughs> or something. Darkness-wise. Like yeah. Blue yeah. shirt-wise. Yeah, edgelord-wise. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to pick song-wise. However... The thing is, an elf's definition of a song is broader than actual singing. Um, I still think it won't be really an issue in terms of too broad. When I played an elf, okay. they let me just sing a song to help with anything. I don't know if that's actually a rule or not, though. That is not... Uh, singing is part really? of nature. Yeah. Oh, it's part of nature. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Why is this are different than from Burning Wheel? So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a wise you can't use on yourself ever. Mm -hmm. Right. So make sure, yeah. sure it's like something that will apply to other people, right. helping other yeah. people do. Why traits you can use against yourself, but not wises. Yes. Okay. And when you all have your wises, uh, let me know what they are and. Uh, okay. I'm going Fun. with Goblin. I'm going to Goblin stick with Song Wise, for sure. Song Wise. Yeah, I'm just going to take the two Dwarf Wises. They seem really good to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, like, uh, I don't know, War Wise or Fight Wise. Fight Wise is a bit too broad. War Wise, yeah. I'll, I'll let go. Skirmish Wise would be Skirmish -wise, a bit yeah. better. All right, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Battle Royale or, like, Outnumbered -wise, wise or something like that. Oh, what not? Why sounds awesome. What well, here? Here's one. Uh, Zen. The uh, we're so fucked. Wise. Is, would, would that be specific enough? Um. No, because this game is like kind of all about <laughs> we're so fucked. Like, fair, fair. That's like, like, wise, that's like torch bear though. wise. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Pick torch wise, like about actual torches. That's a good one. Yeah, that's, that's, that is a thing. Dungeon wise. Firewise. 
Firewise fire is a thing. Yeah. I can go firewise. It'd be fun. Like camp yeah. wise, could like help us make safer camps or something, maybe? Uh yeah, that would be help that would help someone's survivalist role when you uh, set up camp to make it more secure. I remember there being a camp run was very important. Uh y yes. Yeah. When you set up camp there's a random table and on some results you can't set up camp. Your situation is too untenable. I think the ones, some of the stuff we haven't looked at is like a specific town wise or a specific location wise. Right. Where the specific location is like an actual location, not like underground yes. wise or something. Uh, I'm having second thoughts about my song wise because I already, like, in terms of song stuff, there's always already my nature and possibly Elvin Lore. Since yeah, like no one else is going to be singing. Yeah. Um, yeah. If I'm you thinking, had a halfling, that might be a thing, but yeah. Yeah, so you can't yeah, I'm help thinking... by singing. I wouldn't recommend it, though. Yeah. Um... Right, because the idea is the wise bypasses the help mechanic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're helping without getting involved. Exactly. Um... Could I take, like, hit? star wise? Is hidden wise too broad? Is hidden wise hidden wise? Um, hidden what? I think okay would be, would be better. Um, and as far as star wise, uh, do, do you want want to make it like constellation wise? Maybe um, yeah, right. or you know, just just get a little bit more focused on it, and that that's fine. Yeah, right. I'm thinking constellation wise. I'm taking hidden things wise, so it wouldn't be for creatures. Okay. Well, if like um, the constellation or star thing is more for like astrology, you could do say say like something like that, or is it more of like navigating by night type thing? I'm thinking more the latter. Okay. Because we're all coming off a burning wheel where astrology is this huge. <laughs> Yeah, That's astrology insane. means uh, so I had to you can ask. use it for anything. Yeah. All right, so we're all good with wise as it seems. Yep. All right, so now we move on to nature questions. Um, your nature, and it should be on your sheet, starts at three. Um, and then we need to go individually through the, the stocks. And I ask you a bunch of questions. Uh, since. The book starts with Elf. I will start there. Okay. All right. Um, question the first. Do you walk among the ancient trees and on moonless nights and listen to their songs, or has your heart hardened to the long ages since the dawn? And that's a capital D, dawn. I listen to the songs of the trees. If you listen to the ancient songs, increase your nature by one. Done. All right. When evil stalks the world, do you confront it, or do you retreat to hidden the, to the hidden places of the elves and allow time to defeat your enemies? I think I confront it. Okay. Well, uh, if, you you too. if you confront evil, your nature and fighter remain unchanged. Uh, okay. Do you yearn the follow, to follow the cries of the gulls to the sea and journey west beyond all knowledge, or are you prepared to live a life of struggle and grief? You broke up there uh, on my okay. end. Do you mind repeating it? Do you yearn to follow the cries of the gulls to the sea and journey west beyond all knowledge, or are you prepared to live a life of struggle and grief? I am prepared to live a life of struggle and grief. Okay. If you if you do not yearn for the West, you may replace or increase your home trait with fiery, curious, or restless. I will, I may, I will neglect to do so, and I know precisely why. And that will bring us to the end of the elf. Uh, dwarf. Mm. If your kin are slain and their halls plundered, would you spend your life plotting and exacting revenge, or would you tally your losses and move on to greater challenges? Revenge, of course. 
If you would take revenge at any cost, increase nature by one. Yes. Would you plunge ever deeper into the bones of the earth, looking for treasures untold? Or do you fear which you would uncover should you dig too deep? And dwarves gotta dig deep. That's how it works. If you would dig ever deeper, increase nature by one, and decrease fighter skill by one. Okay. And finally, do you yearn to spend your days crafting wondrous objects from silver and gold? Or does the life of adventure call? I'm an adventurer. Okay. If the life of adventurers call, uh, adventurer calls, you may replace or increase your home trait with fearless or foolhardy. I already have foolhardy. I'm going to increase that. Okay. Uh, we skip halfling and go to the two humans. So wait, is my nature... From three to five now, because it went up two. Oh, uh, let's see. You went up with the first one, up with the second. Yes, five. Okay, I'm good. All right, humans. Do you sit by the hearth at night, drinking and boasting of your great deeds, or do you spend those chill nights quietly preparing for the dark times to come? Uh, sitting at the hearth at night, drinking and boasting. I'll take the other one, yeah. All right. If you if you're if you boast your exploits, real or imagined, increase nature by one. If you quietly prepare, you may re increase or replace your home trait with thoughtful or loner. Doing thoughtful. All right. Second question, when the elves and dwarves voice their concerns, do you demand to be heard as an equal, or do you bow your head and listen to the wisdom of your elders? I, uh, I demand to be heard as an equal. Okay. Uh, yeah. Same answer? Okay. Yeah. If you demand your rights, increase your nature score by one, but reduce lore master or scholar by one if you have those skills, or will if you do not. Uh, there goes my scholar. And finally, would you flee from the hordes of goblins, beasts, and monsters that prey on civilization, or would you, or will you plunge into their midst, questing for treasure? Uh, I'm for the treasure. Yeah, take the plunge. If you do not fear those who prey on civilization, you may replace or increase your home traits with Brave, Foolhardy, or Defender. I already had Defender, so I'll bump that up. Is it a you may or you have to situation? You may. Okay, yeah, no, I'm not gonna. Okay. And that'll bring us to the end of that. Uh, circles is next. And that's, again, a bunch of questions for circles and relationships. Um, is Okay, Primer Arc is back. All right, so this is for everybody. Uh, circle starts at one, uh, and you add to that as, as the questions demand. So, do you have friends who enjoy your occasional visits, or are you a loner, tough and cool? Uh, if you have a friend, plus one circles, and write your friend's name on your character sheet. Choose a profession from your home hometown skill list for your friend. If you are a loner, tough and cool, your circle starts at one, and you have an enemy. And think about how did your enemy destroy your life and set you on this path. Write down the name of your nemesis on mortal, or, or mortal enemy on your sheet. Skip the rest of circles and relationships questions and take the loner trade at level one or, or increase it. Also, go get snacks for the rest of the group while they finish answering the questions. That's in the book. Yep. <laughs> A writer? Okay. I think it's writing. I say crossroads. Writer. Writer. 
Okay. Uh, I have a friend, Farathil, a Pathfinder. I think he he is a one of the rangers who guards the elf lands from outsiders. Okay. I have a friend, uh, and Fred. He's a scholar. Uh, I have a friend. Her name is Ellen, and she is an armorer. Armorer. Always good to have a friend that's an armorer when you're a warrior. Yeah, I mean, makes sense. Okay. So you all have a friend. Your circle should have increased, and you wrote down all your friends' names. So we're shaping up to be a, at least a, a social group. Um, next, do you have parents you can stomach talking to, or are you an orphan? Now, notice that this question leaves out parents that you freaking hate. Why? <laughs> mm-hmm. Orphan by choice. <laughs> if you have parents, plus one circles. Note your family name or, or parents' names on your character sheet. Choose a trade for your parents from your hometown skill list. If you're an orphan, you have a keepsake from your parents that is worn around your neck or in one hand. Describe its sentimental value. It's worth one dice of treasure. Put it in your inventory. I have those circles again. I think that my character is on good terms with her family. But I think that they're far away in the dwarven homes. Okay. I think my character's parents, he has a strained relationship with them, but he does not consider himself an orphan, and he does talk to them. There are certain subjects that they avoid talking about because they don't want to argue. Do those subjects include the fact that you journey around with filthy lesser races? Yes, yes actually, that's <laughs> precisely it. My parents are dead as hell. The others dead may think my character as very above it all and very elfy, but consider, but compared to other elves, he's really open-minded. He must say. <laughs> I'm right. an orphan as well. All right, those of you with orphan, um, what what is your keepsake? What does it look like? What uh, and why do you have it? And for the cleric, it can be your holy symbol as well if you want to mesh those together. I think actually it'll be like a old ornate, like hand comb or hand brush of some sort. Okay. So I have to carry that in the hand. Uh, it's hand or it says neck. around your neck, or it would be it would be carryable in a hand. That would be pack one. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going with the broken hilt of my father's sword. It's like broken off, like an inch above the handily bet. Okay. And wait around my neck. All right. Next is, did you have a mentor, or did you make your own way in this rough life? If you have a mentor, plus one circles, note your mentor's name on your character sheet. Your mentor's trade is the same as the specialty you chose for your character. Uh, note this next to his name like so, Froz the Cook. If you made your own way in life, you start with a pouch of cash worth 2D of treasure. It takes one space in your inventory. I think I'll take the circles again. Um, my mentor was uh, like the guild's paw leader of the uh, Merchant's Guild back in the Dwarven Paws. Okay. I have a mentor. Uh, he was Breedon, the cartographer. 
I too have a mentor, an old man named Kenway the Dungeoneer. Is our, is our elf still with us? I'm here. Sorry, I was okay. waiting for everyone else to go. I was, I'm, I was typing out my details. Uh, Boaz the cook um, is my mentor. Okay. Uh, and the final question then, uh, have you made an enemy in your life to have your dubious deeds, or, or have your dubious deeds managed to escape notice? If you'd made an enemy, plus one circles, note your enemy's name on your character sheet, choose a class in stock for your enemy, or let me decide. Uh, the benefit for not having an enemy is not having an enemy. <laughs> yep. Nope. Uh, no um, now, before we... Before Sith and I choose, uh, I believe that the if we look at the laws for <laughs> the Elflands and Seminster tend to be very aligned against each other, um, which uh, means we can... It can be interpreted that way. Uh, Seminster has a law that says that all Elves must cover their faces before men. Uh, yes. And uh, Lassari and has a law that says you cannot belong to a cult of law or chaos. Yep. So I think that my uh, one of my enemies may be someone from Siminster. I say one of my enemies, probably. Maybe my only enemy left alive. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, so my enemy would be a human. There are other clerics, right? This is not a, like a you're the only one of your class type of, type of game? The, that is correct. There are other people that can do the things that you do. You just happen to be the ones we're focusing on. Okay. Perfect. Um, yeah, I think there's a, a human cleric is an enemy of mine. A different one from Stimulus that I'm not traveling with. And uh, I'll figure out their name in a sec. Okay. I also have some headcanon that we can spell when it is relevant as to why the elves and the humans. Uh, Siminster, assumedly humans, the people of Siminster tend to get, get along. Okay. But we'll figure that out when it's appropriate. I think I have a like, younger brother who's a laborer. And he's my enemy because he's very jealous. I got to leave the dwarven lands on good terms. So that's something that doesn't happen often? Amongst the dwarves, they don't they don't really leave much. Or... Yeah, I'm just riffing off the burning wheel dwarves, where like being an adventurer was seen as a bad. Thing. Well, yeah, in Torchbearer, being an adventurer does mean that you are the bottom rung of social caste. Yeah, pretty uh, much. Yep. And homeless somehow... people are looked at higher than you. Like... Right. <laughs> somehow yeah, they they're think... homeless people, and we're homeless violent people. Somehow they think I'm not an adventurer. I think I'm a merchant. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think my my enemy cleric's name is Joan Arkborn. Joan Arkborn. Yep. Okay. And our warrior has no enemy. Does our cleric have an enemy? I think you're muted. Whoa. Square. Yes. Uh, Elven Ranger. An Elven Ranger? <laughs> Perfect. Is it our Elven Ranger? Is it, no. is it my friend, the Elven Ranger guy? Uh, no, it's a guitar? guy named okay. Hamir. Okay. okay. But it could just as easily be you, because all elves look alike. I mean, really. <laughs> yeah. Not many elves grow beards. My elf has a beard. Oh, okay. Oh, hopefully you'll find your mask again, though. It's just unsightly. <laughs> I'm trying to fit in a bit more, so I grew a beard on purpose. 
Okay, so we're we're good with circles then, it seems. Uh, next is, um, let's see, resources. Your resources is at zero. I don't care if you're playing a beggar or you're a crown prince. You have nothing. You are nothing. Shut up about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, after that is adventuring gear. So to start this off, um, actually, you know what? We're going to go down to weapons first because that makes it a little easier. Uh, cleric, you you have either a flail, mace, sling, or warhammer. You may not use weapons with an edge or weapons that cut or puncture. You also have the option to choose a shield as a second weapon. Okay. And for right now, you can put that in the hand-carried slot uh, or on your belt in the weapon slot. Okay. Um, and I think I remember, as a cleric, the <coughs> mace... No, the Warhammer was two-handed. Uh, there is a handout here that has the weapons on it and the second table. Yep. Awesome. Thanks for that pop to screen thing. And correct me if I'm wrong, but with two handed weapons, you can carry them in one hand, but to wield them, you have to drop whatever is in the other hand. Right. Really, the difference yeah. is if you want, yeah. if I want a shield or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Which I don't know. Do I get armor? Uh, yes, you you okay. start with leather armor. Actually, you know what? Every three of you will start with leather armor. The elf will not. The elf, yeah, elf rangers start with very little. I start with a dagger in terms of weapons and no armor. Yep. Uh, let's see. Warrior. Any freaking weapon you want. And a shield if you want to have it. I'm taking a two-handed sword and no shield. Thank you very much. Okay. Dwarf. Any weapon of your choice that is not a bow, two-handed sword, or lance. Uh, you have the option to have a shield as well. So I can take a crossbow? You can take a crossbow. I take a crossbow and a shield? Indeed. Okay. Cool. I want mason shield. Sounds good. Now, just so it's known, the crossbow, if you're using it, cannot be used with a shield. I am aware of that. Okay, just putting it up there. Yep. Making sure. All right, so let's go back to... I hold a shield to... in my teeth. <laughs> I covered it in pitch and just stuck it to my breastplate. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's go back to actual adventuring gear. Uh, first choice you guys have is choose whether to carry a satchel or a backpack. A satchel does not carry as much as a backpack, but a backpack will count against you uh, in terms of OBS when you're doing certain things. Uh, after you choose that, you can fill your pouch and fill your skin with either water or wine. I would recommend wine because it can negate angry as well as hungry and thirsty. And then you can fill your pack and all that other happy shit that adventurers do. Um, and then you can determine what you're wearing on your hands, feet, and torso. Uh, as I, I mentioned before, the three of you will be wearing leather armor. The elf will not. Yep. I vaguely remember some issue with backpacks and armor. But am I misremembering something? Uh, certain I armor... I remember that as well. Certain armor, I believe, takes up too many slots. The leather will not. Certain. Um, okay. But higher than leather, little, you can't wear a long yeah, backpack. Yeah, plate armor, if you're wearing plate armor, it is torso-worn, oh, okay. too. And that it'll be a while before any of you get your hands on that. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, worn. Um, worn is like gloves, and carry is like you're carrying it in your hands. Yeah. So am I wearing the shield, or am I carrying the shield? You're carrying, carrying the shield. Okay. Because you can still wear gloves while carrying. I can? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay.
And then otherwise we can basically fill it up ourselves with yeah. the stuff that's listed there, correct? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, anybody that didn't take a shield can add a helmet to their leather, to their armor equipment, if you wish. Does that include elves? Um, Anyone who had the just... option to take a shield but didn't. Exactly. Oh, okay. So no. Wait, what's the option? Let's have a shield if you didn't a... take a shield, you can have a helmet. Um, oh, now, a, a helmet is ablative. Uh, once it gets hit and you, and you use it to negate something, it is then damaged and you need to get it repaired. A shield doesn't always work like that. That's more of a twist or a complication. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, uh, there is a... On that handout that I sent to you, they're, they're starting equipment. That is the first table. Um, yeah, just, just to go through how that all works. Uh, if, for example, you look at iron spikes, it says pack one. That means it takes up one slot in your inventory. A jug, however, is pack three. It'll take up three slots in your inventory. Uh, the other thing to remember with your inventory in, in your backpack and whatnot, the layer that it's on represents how high up it is in the backpack. So if you need to get to something quickly, have it on the top slot and less needed stuff on the bottom. Mm -hmm. I went with a backpack. Same here. Yep. Yeah, might as well for now. If we get, we can put on our backpacks if we expect to fight, but if we get surprised, we're all going to take a penalty to fighter. Yep. Um, it's okay, I don't have it to begin with, so that's good. Okay. <laughs> I'll just be in the back singing. You you guys take care of that stuff up there with the with the pointy swords and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. Is there a difference between a wine skin and a water skin? Uh, yeah. Well, no, functionally, uh, no. If you fill a skin... Hold. If you fill a skin with wine, you can use it to, I think, give you a bonus die to recover from angry. What I remember is that I had a wine skin and I refilled it with water. But I think the water skin only carried water, but it had twice as much? No. Okay. Now, the skin, the skin is one draft. Right. Yeah. That's, why on, that's why on the table it is wine skin, water skin in the same... Okay. Yeah. They're they are functionally the same. It's just a flavor difference. Sure. In two senses. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, how many light sources is everyone bringing? I guess the real question is who's going to have torches and who's going to have a lamp. There's also I candles. Can... Yes. Candles are not that good. Lanterns and torches well, are working. Well, in your group, actually, candles work out because the best you can do with a lantern is covering three people in whole light and three people in dim light. You have four people. So True. having a candle that lasts longer than any other light source for one person yeah. can be a good True. thing. I think okay, I'll go with so the you candles. can do candle and a lantern. So here's the thing. Can I melt a candle and put it on my shield and then just have the shield and the candle all together? No. Uh, there, there is one way to do that with a magician, but uh, you don't have a magician. There's what's called a nope. candle lantern, and you can put Lucky. that on the end of a magician's staff. Uh, <laughs> should we buy a magician's staff? Or do we have to be a magician? Because it's just a stick, right? It's just an old yeah, it's, man. It, yeah, it's, it's basically just a stick, yes. Uh, but, but I mean, can, at that point, what's the point of even having it? You just carry the thing. Yeah. True. Yeah. Well, well it, it's a nice crutch, but yeah. Hmm. All right. Do we want to take a five-minute break while you guys figure out what's yeah. in your packs? Yeah. Let's take oh, a break. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Let's do that. So we'll be back in about five minutes, and when we come back, we'll still be thinking about equipment because that's how these oh, yeah. games work. Yeah. Right. It'll take like mm -hmm. ten, twenty minutes.